Hello everyone. If you clicked on this video, I'm going to assume you're a massive fan of Game of Thrones. Most of us I'm sure could agree that it's the best TV show ever, but that's not to say that everything in the show has been executed perfectly. In this two-part series, we will look at the Arya and Faceless Men storyline, which let's be honest, was a complete and utter mess. In fact, I now believe that the home base of the Faceless Men, the House of Black and White, must have been named ironically, because there is nothing at all black and white about that place or the faceless men themselves. The House of Grey would be a far more accurate description. So let's start off by looking at what the faceless men are supposedly all about. The faceless men are a shadowy organization of super assassins who take an unspecified form of payment in exchange for the guaranteed death of any target. They are capable of assuming the identities of dead people by wearing their faces. They serve the many-faced god, which the Faceless Men regard as the overarching god of all other deities. It is suggested that the many-faced god simply represents death itself. Jack and Hagar is the main assassin and empty rhetoric spewer of the Faceless Men. He also arrogantly refers to himself in the third person at almost all times. Men must ask forgiveness. The first time we see Jack and, we don't actually see him at all. He appears as an anonymous hooded figure, this could be considered a cool allusion to the fact that he's a faceless man, but is actually because they hadn't cast the role yet. It's theorized these other guys, Rorj and Biter, could be faceless men as well. It makes sense to me because the very next time we see them, they look like completely different actors. First the mountain, then Dario, now this. I think the casting crew might need to be recast. What the hell are they up to? Anyway, so this epic assassin somehow got himself locked in the black cells and is now on his way to the Night's Watch. But I guess this could be some sort of ruse to follow Arya or get a ride to his next target. We'll let him off for now. So this Jack and Hagar guy says later on that death is a gift. There is only one God. Ego knows his name. And all men know his gift. Yet in this scene, he seems very concerned about his own demise. What sort of self-respecting assassin can't pick a rudimentary padlock like that one? But I suppose if he couldn't open the cell earlier when there was no padlock at all, then I guess actual padlocks are entirely impossible for him to crack. Once free, Jacken immediately breaks his promise to fight and runs like a coward. He could have at least taken out a few dudes from the shadows or something. This assassin can't even seem to hide properly, because he gets caught later anyway and ends up at Harrenhal with Arya and co. Okay, I guess for now this could still be part of the ruse to test Arya or something, and he doesn't want to show off his assassination skills just yet. Fair enough. A man pays his debts. A man owes three. Three what? The Red God takes what is his, lovely girl. And only death may pay for life. You saved me and the two I was with. You stole three deaths from the Red God. We have to give them back. As we know, the faceless men worship the many-faced god, and do not see the red god as the legitimate overarching god. But yep, he may still be playing this Jack and Hagar character, and he could be referencing the red god due to the fact the three men were going to be burned to death. So I guess that's all kosher for now. Well, that was subtle. There's a whole group of people gathered around asking if anyone saw anything, and Jacken is straight up pointing to himself. That casual fruit consumption is a dead giveaway also. Where were you? A man has patrolled your teeth. Tywin Lannister was right here, and now he's gone. A girl owes one more name. The Red God demands it. Okay, now Jacken has basically ousted himself as some sort of assassin, but he's still referring to pain the Red God. That's cool, I get it. He wants to keep up the charade a little longer just to make sure Arya is the right candidate. Give the man a name. Wait, hold on, what was that? Give the man a name. 
as if speaking in the third person wasn't annoying enough. He's now calling himself the man. Give a name, any name. And you kill them. Anybody. By the seven new gods and the old gods beyond counting, I swear it. So now he seems to be declaring his belief for every god except the many-faced god. But yes, admittedly he is still playing the Jackin character, which would suggest the vow he just gave was worthless. Except it wasn't, because he completes the job as promised. In fact, he went way too far with it. Alright. Jack and Hagar. Hagar gives a man his own name. That's right. Gods are not mocked. This is no joking thing. But you just mocked them yourself. And Jack and Hagar isn't even your actual name. I'm not joking. Man can go kill himself. Unname me. No. Please. A bit scared of death, are we? I'll unname you. Thank you. If you help me and my friends escape. So now he's just willy-nilly killing people, which as we learn later, is in breach of the faceless men's own rules. A girl has taken a life. The wrong life. That man's life was not yours to take. A girl stole from the many-faced god. Now a debt is owed. Did someone pay to have that dude killed? Was there another death that was owed to the red god? Who knows, but that extra guy got killed and he was probably just forcibly drafted into the Lannister army like Jacken himself. This guy is an elite assassin and he couldn't find a gap for Arya and co to squeeze through or a section of wall to sneak over in a sprawling, ruined castle. But hey, apparently Jacken worships the Red God and we know how bloodthirsty that god can be. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. How do you know we'd come this way? After all the things you have seen, this is your question. How did you kill those guards? Was it hard? No harder than taking a new name, if you know the way. Show me how. I want to be able to do it too. If you would learn, you must come with me. Where? Far and away, across the narrow sea, to Bravos. My dancing master was from Bravos. <laughs> to be a dancing master is a special thing, but... to be a faceless man? That is something else entirely. The girl has many names on her lips. Joffrey, Cersei, Tyburn Lannister, Ilim Payne, the Hound. Names to offer up to the Red God. She could offer them all. Well, that's a lie. And Jacken has now completely admitted that he is a faceless man, yet is still referring to the fact that a girl could offer up names to the Red God. The beliefs and general practices of the faceless men are public knowledge. There is absolutely no need to maintain the charade anymore. Keep in mind he has now paid three deaths to the Red God, plus some random guy. Yet Jacken, now standing proud as a faceless man, is still keen on sacrificing to a god that the faceless men don't believe is the ultimate god. Yeah. What is it? A coin of great value. Farewell, I guess, Doc. Hang on, isn't his voice meant to change too? So where exactly did he hide that face during his time as a prisoner? I dare not imagine. Or maybe he had another random mark somewhere along the road. Who knows, just go with it. That brings us to the end of part one. Join me for part two when we travel to Bravos and enter the two season purgatory that is the House of Grey. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out my other videos if you'd like to see more.